this time I'd like to open the Thank meeting you. of the Carver Conservation Commission for, uh, let's see, what is it today? December 19th. Just push can't on. see that. Okay. <clears throat> Our first order of business is uh, appointments and discussions. I think that was the one that, I think he wants to wait. Yeah. Right? And you're the fellow, yes, you're the guys that want to, well, let's see. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Solar Project. I, as the fellow that you were waiting for, the one who's now sitting behind you? Nope. Is, nope. No, okay. Not him. No. <laughs> okay, so we're waiting for somebody. Okay, so we'll go on to the next item. On consult. <laughs> schedule meeting for bylaw changes. Yeah, so we, we need to schedule you know a meeting with just like the commission to talk yep. about the bylaw advertised. changes. Some right. stuff that say we wanted. I ran off some stuff. I was going to wait and give it to you, you know, for, at that meeting, if you want, so you don't lose it. In the meantime, but so I, I don't know when was she good. trying to say. <laughs> what are you trying to say? She old. You forget. Her lips are stuck. <laughs> um, so can you ever do it during the day? I mean, just for yes, you you can. Uh, it has I mean, to be advertised. The bylaw, the meeting like this yeah. has to be. Uh, so also, we can have it any time. I just didn't know, but sure. you usually have to work. Sunday I mean, morning would be great. Sunday morning. Yeah. yeah Saturday right. morning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let me know what day, and I can make well, arrangements. Our, well, I mean, we whenever you guys want to do it. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have to be a Wednesday night. Or There's still going to be an open meeting. It still has to be an open meeting. Yeah. Right. So we have to post it and have an agenda. Right. And a meeting room. <laughs> and a meeting room. Which oh. is getting hard to come by. In oh, two of us can meeting. stay out and the other two can go ahead. And Even though it's in. just because after yes. we... No, we post a meeting. After we, we make the changes, then we have another meeting. Then we have a public hearing. Oh, public hearing. Oh, so oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, well, so we can't discuss it. Right. Yeah. It's got to be an open meeting. So why don't we just add it to the agenda for our next meeting? At the tail end, we could do that. Okay. That way, we don't have to worry about a second meeting. When do you think the next okay. meeting is going to be? The next meeting is going to be January sixteenth, and there's only going to be one. I think the the solar on Tremont. Tremont Street behind Helga. So yeah. that's the night to do. So why don't we do that? All right, we'll just schedule the same. Sixteenth. All right. So I do have stuff. I have that stuff from Situate. If you want to l look at that. Seven p.m. Tremont Street behind Helga. That's, that's the well. It, the address is near. Tremont Street, but okay, it's, it's, it's actually, actually you know off of <coughs> Cranberry. Yeah. And it's one ninety six off of Cranberry Road, but one ninety six Tremont. All that, uh, all that mess down there. They give you zero, zero such and such a street, and it's like fifteen miles. I know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like a, they don't have an address. But they must go well. out to Tremont Street, I guess. I guess blogs, that's part right. Of it, yeah. <clears throat> we'll figure it out. All right. So we'll just do it that night. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the 16th of January. So do you want that stuff from Situate to look at? Yes. I'd like to propose I'd bylaw changes to look over. Sure. Well, I ran these off. This is from the town of Situate. And this is, they have like a no disturb mm -hmm. buffer, which we were talking about. But then, and then if you do anything within it, like say if you have to, you know, alter some of that buffer, that no disturb. Do you want then you one have for the dog? <laughs> then you have to do it. He's sound asleep. He doesn't need one. <clears throat> so this so. is Situate. That's it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can read them and see. Plagiarized citrate. Yep. And this is all coming out of discussions that we've had at the Invasive Species Task Force. Yeah. Yep. Because it ties in because of the uh, you know, pr protecting the wetlands from fertilizers and and other nutrients that will <coughs> aggravate uh, aggravate the growth of of the invasive species and also. Uh, even some species that are not invasive but are detrimental, like algae. Mm -hmm. Algae. Yeah. Yeah. So, I've got plenty of that where I am. I do have these two actually. Let me give you these. Are we looking for um, many other towns? Um, I haven't. That one I know. Um, a lot. Do you know? Say, have you gathered up uh, other towns that were by laws? No, I haven't. Basically, we're. And we'll talk about it more in, at our next meeting. But basically, what I had proposed, and I think we looked at that the last meeting that we had, that was a handout that Brooke mm -hmm. had, was uh, moving the the um, 65 foot buffer that we have now out to 100 feet mm -hmm. of, of being, and, and changing the wording so that it was a true no touch zone, not right. just impermeable or buildings or yeah. structures. Um, and there was pushback. In the meeting about the um, strictness of it, so 
what surprise. Brooke thought of, and I thought was a good compromise, was to, she mentioned the, um, the uh, situate rules, which are, I believe you said 50 This feet? is a 50, yeah. So, you, so could, you could go from 65 to the 50 and then have Or we could adapt different. these rules for the 65. Right. Why don't we adapt the rules for 65? Well, that's, we, this is what we'll talk about at our yeah. next meeting. Okay, good. Mm. Yeah. But uh, this will give you a chance to look yeah. at it and... Uh, okay. and mm. warrant warrant and be that's what a town meeting is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That we, we would need to kind of rule on it ourselves and then, then have a public and hearing on it. Okay. Yeah. And then write an article. MACC. Or they present it at the annual meeting. Well, we, we would probably present to the Board of Selectmen. Make it easy. You still have to get a book because it's a change. Yeah. You still have to go to the this yes, is, but, um, but we would have to we would have to go to the selectmen right. to get, get it on, on to the warrant. Yeah. 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 Okay, I got it. Just for invasive species stuff. And this is from those are from MACC for okay. invasive species Super. specifically. Yeah. Yeah, the conditions what one sort of Okay. So you those put that in the information. Those Marianne wouldn't really even have to be in the bylaw. Meeting. Those could just be, uh, you what know, on our meeting? attached to our. First one I wouldn't yeah. attach until yeah. the right. next meeting. Attach them as when we fine tune right. it. So don't attach this to. I wouldn't one. attach it. I just leave it as yeah. a yeah. discussion was we made at the next meeting. So maybe like the next time we yeah. could, yeah. Well, when we you know when we do issue a bylaw, though, a lot of these things probably should be attached to it as well. Right. Yeah. So right. Yeah. We could be. Yep. We could have used that no, some of these I, I today. So, see, I mm. like right. Number two would have been. Mm. Right. Mm. Okay. Okay. Good. Now let's see. <coughs> Next see item is lot four B, Wenham Road, COC request. You yeah. listed that. We seem to be pleased with it. There were a few things we uh, wanted to postulate yeah. that they keep the. Uh, Are you here for that too? For the yeah. for the COC, yeah, well, I was you put the other one, but <laughs> we got the same guy. <laughs> yeah, come on over. Take the seat. We have Hot a couple seat. issues we'd like Don't to discuss. Don't mind the wires attached to the chair. Sure. Four <laughs> B is that the that's the one that's that's the yeah. which ones we looked at. Did you uh, bring your flak jack? No, I was just come on it. Plaque card. Okay. Nope. Jack, and you're gonna need this. No, right. Oh, I was gonna say no. I didn't. <laughs> Made it a much better project. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we looked at it today, and we liked what we saw. We did, did a nice job Thank reorienting you. the house, so on and so forth. Um, there was a desire to have. Well, say, we weren't to talk about. When we first met with you mm -hmm. back in February. Uh, when you, uh, with the first plan that you submitted, sure. one of the things that we brought up was uh, your access to where you had to put the well. Yes. And that you were going to make that as narrow as possible, and and right. after the well was done, that you were going to that would be an, an area where no one would go anymore. Correct. Uh, well, we were there today, and that the access area back to the well, which I understand you need, is about 18 20. to 20 feet wide and uh, covered with uh, pine bark or pine mulch. Mm -hmm. um, chip, chip. Pine. Yeah, chips. Yep. Yeah, wood chips. chips. Yep. Wood chips. And um, we were just, uh, we kind of thought that in the conversations that we had that it was going to be sort of put back a little bit more like the rest of the wetlands. Sure. Uh, with some plantings, allowing, of course, for whatever width of vehicle you would need to go back should you need to service the wellhead. Mm -hmm. But uh, we just thought that the 20 feet width uh, was a little bit at this point you know it, it may have been fine when you had to put the well in sure. but we'd like to see some plantings okay come back in to make it narrower yeah I, I don't think we're opposed to that okay yeah, yeah I mean, I'm pretty no. sure um, you know Jamie had said that he would do that but oh yeah so so you want the plantings on the on the wetland side sort of to make I think the, so make that strip but whatever whatever works for you because the the wellhead seems to be centered yes so if yeah. you have to put a little bit left and right mm -hmm. to keep a straight line to get to the wellhead yep. um, then that's fine too yes yeah, so cleaned up a little Bit. But we, you know, make it eight or eight or nine feet wide, whatever you need to get a truck in there, sure. as opposed and to the if, width if it is now. If it's okay with the commission, what we'll do is we'll call Brooke, we'll show her where we're looking to do it, and then right. we'll call her when we're done with that. That would be okay. ideal. That's Thank fine. You. Yeah. Okay. So you Excellent. probably want I'm on the plants. You probably obviously want to wait till. Spring. Oh no! Yeah, we right now we just make a mess. <laughs> there, there oh, was I know. One, one other thing that I I caught when we were out there, and I just thought I'd bring it up now. Uh, I should have said something earlier. Uh, you know the sign that they have on the tree mm -hmm. that says don't go beyond this yep. point. Well, this is your homeowner, by the way. 
who obviously didn't read the sign. Uh, he's back there and he put an invisible fence system in, in the ground, mm -hmm. all the way back, way beyond that, down into the woods and back up and through. Could you do me a favor and make sure that he is aware of what that sign reads and we, we keep an eye on it? Yes. Because he, it's obviously he didn't read the sign or something, but if you go back there, it's all dug up. Remember you saw this, yeah, the, the, the flags way the down below? <coughs> yeah. That just hit me yeah. when I was at home this evening saying, wait a minute. So obviously he's not paying attention to what's, what's going on there. We would appreciate it if you could talk to him about it. And if we have to do an enforcement order mm -hmm. to get him fixed, we'll do that. No, we'll, we'll reach out. I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. I, I'm I'm not sure that I see that as such a. Uh, we well, dug severe. it all up. Mm. Oh, we did. Well, he, he dug it oh, up. Yeah, he it, dug it up. To he put buried, the, buried the wire. Yeah, and then buried the wires. Two yeah. wires. And it will. It About a hundred feet in. past the. Uh, up, up yes. Past the sun. Yes. But it will in in time, probably within the length of a year. It will become part of the natural conditions again. But I don't think that's the point. The point is that he violated the wetlands that we stipulated not to go past. The, the point also is, I think, is that um, that gives the dog free reign. It does. To go in there. And I, and yes. I don't know how active the dog is, but yeah. the, the dog could <laughs> make that his playground. And all of a sudden, all of the undergrowth is, is ripped up. Out to the electric, out to the dog fence. So sure. couldn't the squirrels and the. Well, <laughs> I'm just well, saying the it's, are a little it's smaller. The, it's I'm more on Jim's side. I don't think it's. Yeah. Well, I didn't see it, so. Yeah. I. Uh, as as it's it's a, a, you know, it, if if they if they if they get away with this without us saying anything, I understand. It, you know, time goes on, things get that. worse. That's right. all I'm thinking. Right. Right. You, I, I think see something your point, should be said. But I also, I don't feel that its effect. Will be anywhere near severe enough. Oh, I understand that. That's uh, going to be a problem. I agree with you, Jim. But the issue is, he did this step. Now, what's his next step going to be? The dog's a digger. Mm. So it, it can get worse. Well, it's true. I mean, considering the yeah. fact that he's got a, a two. Considering the signs right there. there, I'm just saying. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> is is it all right if we make him aware that they're yes, not to that's be what doing I'm activity just make beyond, him aware but that, leave right. the wire in place and not right. causing more the mess? <laughs> Is and while yeah. you're back there digging you, uh, to fix that area, be careful. There's a lot of open wires down down through that path. Interesting. Okay. okay. Yeah, they, they, mm. they had more wire than they needed, so it's coiled, but it's exposed. Exposed, Good. and okay. you're going to trip right over if you're not careful. I, I think I'd like that. you to make him aware of that in writing. Okay. And I think I'd like to have you give Brooke mm. a copy of that letter. Okay. Mm. That's, that's good. That's good. They, yeah, they, yeah, they, like they own that house, the new people, or, or are they renting it? They're renting. Oh, they're renting it. Okay. Oh, okay. Then a copy should also go to the landowner, the house owner. The house owner, the landowner is going to provide them with the letter. Yeah, that's come from Jamie Emerson. Okay. He's still on I, it. So yep. I apologize to the commission for bringing that up. It no, just, you're oh, right. I think you're no, 100% right. Until you brought it up. It yeah. just it, this right. gets more involved now because it's a renter. Yep. Mm. So that anything, any fine that would ever be levied or any action taken by the board go to the homeowner. would go to the homeowner. Mm. And... Yeah. That's not fair. No, and that's not something we're looking for. And I'm no. sure that Jamie's <laughs> not aware of it at all because he's been pretty straight up with us. So, yeah. There you I go. Think I'd like to well, see that. Well, he just never probably. I, for one, would not see that as a, see as a problem. But you guys do, so we have to consider it. Yeah. Well, I, I don't see it as a problem as it is now, but what is it the, you know, to, to Tim's like point, what is stone. the next step? Yeah. You know, it's a stepping stone. The dog's all. allowed there now. Is, are the kids going to be allowed back there? And then if in the future that we find out that he's got a dog that tears the place all up, then we can take a further action at that point. Right. Because disturbing the wetlands is disturbing the wetlands, no matter how you, mm -hmm. no matter how you figure it. So. Yeah. Okay, understood. All right. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. But overall, we're pretty happy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, it, 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 it fits in nicely. Nice. Yeah. And we figured you should probably just leave a silt fence up. Don't you think we would? Yes. Maybe not take it out I think it came year. out very yeah. nicely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's, yeah. yeah. He probably wouldn't, he wasn't going to remove I, it anyway. Yeah. I don't know how he could. Yeah. <laughs> so it was probably frozen in the ground. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Okay. <laughs> All right. There's yeah. an area in a low Enough point uh, uh, along the, uh, the, the uh, barrier that uh, we were especially concerned with because it, it looks like there might be spillage into that point. And so that's why we definitely want to keep the. Uh, the barrier. Just give us a letter so we can put it in the file. Okay. 
Not a problem. We'll okay. get that. Okay. All right. So Thank you. Sure. So based on all this discussion, can we still issue a CRC request? We, we could, and we could just put the, those the, conditions yes. on, you know, get a letter from the, from yeah. the people and then the plant teams. Great. I don't right. see why we couldn't. Okay. I, I, I know Jamie will. I think it would protect Jamie also right. if we put it in the conditions. Yeah, yeah. yeah so put a conditions the, on the, the COC. the homeowner yeah. some teeth. Right, mm -hmm. right, and he can yeah. then tell the tenant. And then he can enforce yeah. to a tenant. So yeah. I think it's protective of the I'd board. I'd hate to do an enforcement or something stupid no, like we that. Don't, no, I don't think that would come to that, but I, th I think it would protect the homeowner. Right, I agree. Protects the town and protects the homeowner right. against the tenant. Right. Yeah, that works. Okay. Repeat that one. Okay. Let's try something else. So, so a motion to, a issue, motion to yeah, issue a uh, COC with the discussed conditions. I will make a motion to uh, issue a COC with the conditions as discussed for uh, for A uh, Wenham. For B. I'll okay. second that. It's been moved and seconded to issue a COC for uh, Wenham Lot 4B uh, with the conditions um, as discussed. By the commission. Yep. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The, the Pass unanimously. To the tenants. Oops. So notice from, from us. We'll hold off on the minutes because yes. it's now um, 18 past. And then a copy of the letter exactly. from the owner to the tenant. Yep. And then the silt fence coming out in the spring. Oh, yep. and a narrowing of the. Uh, and doing the plantings on the uh, yeah, narrowing yeah. of the, the traffic. Uh, access to the well. Traffic <laughs> 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 generator. <laughs> okay. How's up? How's up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Al, it was pretty wide down there, all the way through. I remember when we had the first meeting of that. It was that was supposed to go back like it never happened, and right. that was the initial discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So it's pretty. So a narrowing of that. To <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to move to the new hearing. Um, we don't have a number for this, do we? The other guy is here, by the way. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, he's call. out. He's in a conference. Okay. Right. Uh, so since he's still not quite ready, it looks like we'll continue with the lot 9B on Home Street. Yep. Notice is hereby given in accordance with the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Carver Wetlands Protection Bylaw. That a public hearing will be held at 7 15 p.m. on Wednesday, December 19th, 2018, in meeting room one of the Carver Town Hall to hear the notice of intent submitted on behalf of JLK Realty Development, LLC, for the construction of a single family dwelling with associated subsurface sewage disposal system, driveway, utilities, and grading. A portion of this dwelling is proposed within the 100 foot buffer zone to wetland resource areas bordering vegetated wetland, Granbury Bog, and grading is proposed within the 65-foot buffer. The applicant is requesting a variance from the Carver Wetlands Protection by Law, Section 9.2.1.3, uh, subsection 3, for the activity within the 65-foot buffer protected under the bylaw, and a variance under Section 9.2.1.3, uh, subsection 4 for the construction of a residential dwelling within 100 feet of Cranberry Bog. The project is located at 9B Home Street, uh, Carver Mass, Map 65, part of Lot 91. All interested parties invited to attend. So, we did get to visit it today, yeah. and we did have some uh, strong feelings and suggestions about it. Okay. We're going to. Uh, We'd like to request, possibly, I think that you spin the house 90 degrees uh, so that it uh, could, uh, let's see. Well, I think that the first thing that, okay. that yeah, go ahead. Uh, we noticed today at the, at the site visit was that nothing was marked. Right. Yeah. So I think we have to continue. Yes, we will, actually, because okay. we can't really tell where you're planning on doing anything. Understood. But we can talk about what we want. Some of the things that we noticed today. Okay. So you'd like to have the uh, the house staked Located. out? Located. Okay. Yeah. Not a problem. But we should tell you that also, we would like to know if you can situate it in such a way that it's all outside the 100 foot. And that would mean possibly turning it 90 degrees so it would lie along the, under, roughly, along the 100 foot line. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't do it. Is that possible to do? Well, that's for yes. Yeah, you turn the house on, or you can move the property line over. Like yes, that's another possibility. Whether 
Yes. I don't know if we can do the property line part here, but I'll, we'll take a look at everything. I'm just yeah. saying. Absolutely. Why not? I'm just giving you yeah. options. Right? No, I appreciate you're that. You're the yep. builder. Yep. You know? no. He owns uh, all these properties, right? And so he's going to be, and he probably is going to continue renting them, them at least for a while. And so it's his choice to decide whether to, uh, you know, how to lay them out. We had some luck with the one on Wenham Road and suggesting that he move the property line over a little bit. Yep. It worked out very well. Yes, it did. So uh, we'd okay. like to possibly suggest that here, too. Or take a look at it, if that's a, okay. a possibility. So, uh, but but given the fact that right, we do have to look at it when it's, when it's flagged properly, so we can tell whether what's good, what's bad, and what we need to have changes on. Um, so we, we probably should just continue until we get the, the flagging in. There's also just mm -hmm. in the in the very back of the property mm -hmm. there's uh, a buffer area of I'd say 40 feet back there that hasn't been touched mm -hmm. I'd like to see if we can leave that like back in that area like by the pond yeah that's a 40 foot area I mean there's a there's a driveway going down through there but from the driveway up to the sand there's got to be 40 feet of, of natural vegetation right there well I mean, just based on what our bylaws are, it has to be 65 feet. Right. And the same well, triangles that were put at Wenham Road have to go 65 feet away from the, the pond and the bog. I just want to make sure they don't ask for access to that. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Right. But I agree with you. Yes. Right. But the, I, you know, that part of the conditions when this finally happens, and and I, you know, I know that I know that the house on the adjoining property is outside of our jurisdiction, but mm -hmm. the property isn't. Correct. And and uh, I think that, you know, the the, si some the, the 65 foot buffer from that, the pond that's on lot A mm -hmm. also would have to go back to its natural state. You know, it wouldn't, we wouldn't allow lawn all the way down to the. And edge. we're not proposing anything beyond the 100 foot. Okay, on, on that's that. fine. But well, it's, again, it's, it's it's going to be part of the conditions, and and uh, I mean, right now yeah, it's yeah. it's all sand. There's nothing there, not even a blade of. No, meat. I know, I know. It's, <laughs> it's it, been on, cleared. It is on all sides. It's can, yeah. it's just a big open sand bed. Essentially, well, a lot of sand is all it is. It's a ton, and there's some piles of stones from the uh, from yeah. the bog operation, and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. bog stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was a little different because it wasn't pristine forest, and so we didn't know exactly to what level and to where the commission would like to go. So we tried to minimize earthwork disturbance. Yeah. We tried to keep everything out, while also understanding that there's wells across the street with 150 foot setbacks and and everything else so it was kind of a juggling act and we tried to we tried to adhere the best we could mm -hmm. so but we have no problem staking it out i'll present to jamie about uh seeing what we can do with the house out of the buffer um and then um what, what is the commission's feeling for stuff from beyond the 100 foot buffer are you looking for us to stabilize it is that yeah any, anything <coughs> with, with anything within 100 feet Mm -hmm. uh, that's been already cut down and it's got to be stabilized. Well, I think for sure. he wanted to do All it is is sand. Anyway, when he wanted Whatever to was there is now gone. I don't know what was there. Trees. But, mm. Yeah, so it's all gone. So that has to be all stabilized. I mean, he sure. wanted he wanted to do some landscaping anyway for the right, for the new homeowners. I would think he wouldn't want to leave it just right. There. But the but the sixty five foot buffer should mm. go. I mean, there should be plantings there, but then it should be left natural. Right. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. Right. Right. We right. Suggest yeah. probably the uh, conservation mix be planted in it because that will take in well, that type of soil very well it's mm. used on bog banks you so think on. it'll take on the sand yes well yeah enough? okay yeah there's a couple of this i think there's one that's made for sandy Savory oh there's definitely yeah, yeah. yep yeah. Savory, or uh, mr chair because it's a, a bog our bylaw says the 65 feet act doesn't it actually go away it goes to 100 foot yes it mm. should yes. that's right so there is no 65 foot it's 100 foot that's that's true uh, oh. As far as uh, because of a bog, the fact that right. it's a bog. So, yeah. it, the 60, you should have stuff along the 65, uh, along the 100 foot, foot, with signs don't go beyond this point. Well, the, actually, the the bog is on the southwest side. Right, so of that's the what property. I'm saying. This so side here. That would be 100. Right. And then at where the 65 back here. Pond is would be 65. Uh, so, it's 100 feet here, which is this right here. So, this right. is way yeah. out. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. So it's 100 foot on the bog side, yeah. mm -hmm. protect the bogs, 
Yep. And 65 feet on the back side where the pond is. They're going to dig into this 100 foot. I thought that's what the bylaw. Yeah, it says uh, no person shall build any residential dwelling within 100 feet of a cranberry bog. That's what I thought. Okay. Without asking for a variance. Yeah, it's kind right. Of an yeah. odd, there you go. An odd thing, but I'm not sure. Yeah, but yeah and this one's. Okay. I'd like to see you discuss with Jamie maybe the possibility of turning the house. Let's see if that's even feasible. I'd rather have you come back to us and say, you know, we looked at it and it's just. There's no way it's going to work. Sure, no. I, I, and then it makes it easier for <coughs> us to sit back and discuss it so that if we're going to grant the variance, <coughs> we're granting it because you did all you could and this is the way it's got to go. Sure. As opposed to this is just where I feel like putting it, and I'd like you guys to give me the go-ahead. And I think some stakes put out on the ground will help Jamie envision where it is too, mm. as, along with the commission. So let, let me get some stakes out there for him so we can all figure it out. All right. okay. We're not trying like to, to ruin the night, right. but and and the the house, <laughs> the the house on lot A, yes. can be moved further back. It can from yes. the road. Yes, you know, to, and to offset it maybe and and. J he likes to have it so sure. we're not going over one telephone sure. pole in between the street and the house. That um, that's just been his standard, but yeah. sometimes we have no choice but to do that. Right, but but, but I can't. think if, if knowing know. that you can that's a fifteen hundred dollar telephone pole. We can't go yeah. any further on it. Knowing that you have wiggle room with with that house, we may have to. Yeah, yep. gives you some some more options with the with the one on lot B. No, I I appreciate it. We'll definitely all right. consider it all. So we're good with that with the hundred foot. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll make a motion we continue this. When, till when? January 16th. For January 16th. Can you be ready for the 16th? Yes. All right. I will second Thank you. Now. Do you have comments? Can you get public yes. right now? Or? It's no, continued. We don't. Uh, if you folks are here in uh, connection with this hearing, uh, we will not be able to do anything more because there's not enough information present for the commission to work on. However, at January 16th, we will then resume and real information will be dispensed at that time so if you would be so kind as to come back and attend that meeting um that will if it's uh, if this is the one that you're interested in it's lot are you here for 9b home street, home street? yeah no, 12, 12 oh okay oh, that's the next okay. everybody's 12 you're innocent here. oh darn <laughs> you're safe jamie <laughs> okay <laughs> Boy, okay thanks, you're gonna guys. get out of here with your head tonight <laughs> yeah i'm out of here then <laughs> thank you <laughs> all right we didn't vote we just on the, uh, oh, no, we haven't, Okay, we haven't voted on the Thank you, Did Jamie. we get a second on Yeah, I seconded. you seconded it. I seconded so, it. It's been moved and seconded to continue to January 16th, the hearing on uh, 9B Home Street. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's passed unanimous. Okay. So, <laughs> we're on to the next. Here for that, uh, for that yeah. first item that we'll find out. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Notice is hereby given in accordance with the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Carbon Wetlands Protection Bylaw, that a, a public hearing will be held at 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday, December 19, 2018, in Meeting Room 1 at the Carver Town Hall to hear the Notice of Intent submitted on behalf of Cranberry Realty Development Incorporated for the construction of a new single-family dwelling to replace the existing dwelling with associated subsurface sewage disposal system driveway, utilities, and grading. The proposed septic system and a portion of the existing and proposed dwelling are within the 100-foot buffer zone to a wetland resource area, uh, that is Fresh Meadow Pond, and a portion of the existing and proposed dwelling are within the 65-foot buffer of Fresh Meadow Pond. A variance under section 9.2.1.3, uh, subsection 3 of the Carver Wetlands Protection Bylaw is required for the activity within the 65-foot buffer protected under the bylaw. This project is located at 12 Pond View Way, Carver, Mass, Map 109, part of Lot 9090R. All interested parties are invited to attend. Okay. But we only have one drawing on there? Oh, good. Hello, It's you and me, Jim. Right, and we have... Can you yeah, you should be by the again? microphone. Okay. Why don't you bring it up, Steve, by the... Uh, yeah, yeah, can you? Yeah, I'll bring everything up here, and then I'll try to get it so that the audience can see it as well. It looks like we've got some... Yeah, we have the maps, too, so they... Okay. Yeah, we're going to want the public to, to look at that, too. And I'll kind of turn it towards their advantage, and they'll... 
can kind of follow along in the plan. Um, as I said, my name is Steve Katowski I'm from Webby Engineering. Uh, we were asked to prepare the Notice of Intent application. As you can see from the plans, we did not pre prepare the plans. Uh, we were asked to refile plans that were originally filed back in 1999 that were eventually permitted uh, for what we're proposing to do tonight. Uh, back in 2007, I think that went up to uh, the last revised uh, date on the plan. The plans were prepared by uh, Bill Snow, who was a PE. Uh, I believe Bill's retired. Uh, he was originally uh, uh, hired by the previous owner to prepare the plans, go through this permitting process. Um, as you know, you're aware the permits have uh, expired and uh, we were asked to prepare a new notice of intent application. My client wishes to use the existing plans and eventually if the order conditions is granted, he's asked us to, you know, stake the new house out and kind of, you know, make sure that everything is put in the right place. So um, basically you have a very small lot. You have an existing single family home. Um, you have a proposed septic system that's uh, beyond the 65 foot. Uh, the property does uh, front on Fresh Meadow Pond. Uh, the uh, w do, uh, <coughs> the uh, inland bank uh, line was delineated at the time. Uh, the 65-foot uh, uh, local jurisdictional boundary uh, setback uh, basically bisects right through the middle of the house. Uh, the 100-foot setback just goes uh, just a little bit north of the uh, proposed septic system. Now the septic was never installed. That was also uh, never done. So right now, I believe there's just a you know a couple of cesspools out there. Uh, there's um, you know as you know no town water down in that area. So we've got a lot of uh, things we have to kind of take into consideration, or were taken into consideration when the plans were prepared. Setbacks from uh, existing wells from the neighbors and things like that. Uh, these plans were approved uh, by the Board of Health. Um, we had submitted uh, another set of these plans with a new application to the Board of Health as well. Um, the agent had contacted our office yesterday and just asked us to verify the well locations and he provided us with some uh, as-built plans from some of the neighboring properties as well. Uh, we did go out there, Joe Webby from my office and had gone out there and uh, visually inspected to make sure that those wells were in the same location as shown on the plans, just to make sure that nothing had changed from when the plans were originally drawn and didn't look like uh, to him that there anything had changed since uh, the original plans were drawn. So as was stated in the uh, public hearing notice, what the applicant would like to do is raise the existing house. It's in pretty bad shape from what I've been told and rebuild a new house in the same footprint as what's there currently. Uh, and also to uh, install the, uh, the, the septic system as was previously designed and, and, and would be uh, approved. So that's, uh, that's basically for the presentation. Um, they were proposing um, a straw hay bale line back in the day. If that's not suitable today uh, for your standards today, they, we, you know, we'd be okay if you wanted to substitute that for silt sock or siltation barrier or something like that. I know that you know typically we don't want to see straw um, uh, hay bale lines that close to uh, resource area now. So uh, we did talk to our client about that, and he said that would be fine. A silt sock, if that was appropriate for the commission, would be okay with him as well. So let's. Uh, okay. mm. Well, we were out there today. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, a lot of ivy <laughs> on the ground. Yeah. Poison? We were, no, just no, no. Like ivy, like ivy, ivy, like green. English yeah. ivy. Yeah, it's crazy it's growing ivy. Poison. Poison. Not? And poison. Oh, poison well. Too? Um, the, the house, the structure that's there now is just about shot. That's what I've been told, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, what I, I guess at one point was the front porch is, is basically non existent any longer, and, and the floor is, is the floor of the forest. Mm -hmm. um, but that's still part of the original footprint. On your plan, to the west of the main house and where it's indicated that it says porch, there is something that says proposed addition. Yeah, I believe that was to square off that section of the porch, just to square off that section of where the existing house was, um, and to include the you know from where the porch is to include you know just a. Is it a porch or is it an addition? 
I believe it, there's an existing porch, but they want to box off that section of the house so that it's not make an addition. On it. Make an addition, a, addition to the existing footprint is what I understand, so that the it's house an is more of a, to the existing footprint yeah, within the, the 65 foot. Exactly. Okay. Well, um, we have uh, we have not allowed that in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I live on Sampson's Pond, and I've, I've, over the last 60 years, I've seen homes go from uh, little fishing shacks to two and three story buildings on the exact same footprint because that's what's allowable within the 65 foot. So as far as I'm concerned, the proposed addition would uh, would not, I would not feel um, that I would want to allow that. Also the deck. And uh, all that decking's new. And the cantilevered wooden deck, well. That's still, well. Proposed. It's, it's still cantilevered, good. it's not, it's not as a footing. As, as long as it doesn't have footings under it. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to cantilever. Well, they're, 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 you're building from new. Correct. So they could probably run their joists. They run well. it through the, f yeah, yeah, exactly. The current structure that's there now, I didn't really look at it. Does it have a foundation or is it sort of raised on? I've seen it, but I kind of had the same. It's on we, footings. We, we, I, I didn't get that close to it, too, or don't mm -hmm. think I could have got that close to it to take Hopefully. a look at it. Um, I don't. From just the proximity to the water table and things like that, I'd be surprised if it did have a full foundation. What is the proposal, though, to to put a full foundation on the full foundation? Yeah, to raise it. Yep. All right, and and um, we have to follow the existing footprint. They have to, yeah, but also, don't we need elevations? Yeah, we do. We have to see the elevation, see what's going on. It's basically the same. Right. It's the same. There's no elevations here at all, is there? But not of what, has, not uh, of the proposed house. Has, has has the property owner investigated at all moving the entire structure outside the 65? Not that I'm aware of. I think he was just because of the zoning issue to keep it in the existing footprint, so that it wouldn't require you know going to the board of appeals and having to you know ask for variances to side line setbacks, things like that. I do I do know part of it is the wells up in that. Um, yeah, I see in that, that area. Right and, and, yeah, and, and so moving it up, I mean, the, I'm sorry, the, the septic system is up in that area, so we're trying to maintain setbacks to the new foundation as well. Um, I mean, we do have a little bit of room we could move it, maybe move the tank a little bit, but as you can see from the circles from the neighbor's offsets from their wells, we're trying to, you know, maintain the setbacks that we can to there. So, you know, the septic kind of dictates a lot of where the proposed house can be, and, you know, with the size of the lot as it is, it seems like the most logical spot is to leave it where it is. Well, uh, you know, from from the standpoint of yeah, our commission, this sure. this to to us is a clean slate mm -hmm. uh, because the house has to, to look at. has to be raised. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we we are are bound by uh, what's happened in the past to allow the current footprint to to um, be rebuilt, but not the addition. I'm a little concerned as well about the uh, the wooden deck. Although if that's a wooden deck with slats and, and allows rainwater to get through and it's cantilevered off so that there's no footings or foundations underneath that, um, that would probably pass muster to a certain extent. But the, uh, uh, I'm of the opinion, my opinion is that we need to maintain the, for at least for the foundation, the exact. Um, keeping it within the existing. Keeping it within the footprint of what exists right now. Right. right. Would we consider uh, uh, allowing, if the whole house were put back maybe a couple of feet, then this addition could be going on without, you know, it severely disturbing? Go on in front of it. Yeah. Outside. Uh, I uh, I think. I'd that like to see more detail in the plan. I'd like to. I'd like An to updated see. Updated plan. I'd like to see the proposed plan of what they yeah. want. Yeah. Yeah. I, with, that's with really the, with you, the height of the. You refer more to an elevation plan for the proposed house no, as opposed the to the whole site, drawing the site plan. This is an old set of plans, and yeah. it looks like we're trying to find twenty-seven ways to pull a rabbit out of a hat, and I just don't think that that's. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I think we'd like to know where, uh, you know, where, where the basement level is. Mm -hmm. You know, in in regards to the con with the with the uh, contour here, there's no contour on this at all. Yeah. Um, and I know that it's very the steep going down. There, period. Right. There's no topo, and it's it's relatively steep going from Pondview Way straight down to where the where the house is, and there from there on to back to the water, it's relatively flat, a lot flatter than the the uh, street side. Also, I'm looking at. This was I know how steep that is. We were out there today. <coughs> My concern is also the location of that well. 
how the heck are you going to get down to that well? The drill. The wells, I believe, is already there. Are you going to use the existing well? This says new well to be installed yeah. and tested, so unless it, it, it's an. You okay. probably have a well there, but it looks to oh. me like you're going to retap it. Yeah, I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it, it does show the new well yeah, and with the new water line. But with all due respect, through the chair, this, this plan is 12 years old. Yeah, I understand that. So it's really be completely And redone. the entire lot is short of a little tiny area. The driveway is about all you've got there that's outside the 100. <laughs> the house is almost all within the 65. I just I'd like to see something current and updated and yeah. what's the end result going to be before yeah, more, more of what's proposed than what's yeah. there. I, I agree Alan but I think our uh, questions may give the company that is, uh, some idea as to what we want to see. Uh, for instance I have a question is there any intention to use that area that was obviously a garage before? Over on the side. I'll have to. I'll have to ask my client on that. I'm not sure what his intention was for that area. Uh, Mr. Chairman, since no, there was also some people in the public raising their hand, I'd like to speak also, yeah. just to let you know. Uh, okay, so oh, go ahead. Uh, Edward Pudlowski, 10 Bondu Way. Right. Uh, where is the existing driveway going to come in on these new plans? It's right on a. Right at the tip of it, it's not it's, really a driveway. It's, it's a, just a pad, basically, a, off the street. A thing sticking in, and it's not going down to the house. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming off that little road there, yeah. about 20 feet in the block. Could you point that out yeah. to him, please? Can you see this? Ed, come on up and take a look at that, will you? She was concerned. Well, we can, just before we close. I don't see anything that's... Uh, Because this is an old drawing, the, all that stuff that was granted yeah. ceased and desist. It, it it isn't any good anymore. It was never done. Yeah, it's, it's expired. like going back to square one. Did Joe well, not supposedly it was to be registered the compliance the deed. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. If they have it on the deed, but, you know, we'll, we're going to be. Yeah, I have the old order conditions, but not a certificate. We have to close that out before they can issue this. Anyway. It's a concern. So <laughs> anyway, I, okay. I, I, I told Joe, but. Uh -huh. I think he was satisfied with the driveway. We think he was a little um, just the positioning of the plan, trying to figure out where the driveway came in. Yeah. But it does show it, it in the correct. location where he preferred it to be, yeah. as opposed to where it goes currently. Yes, my name is um, Marty Colligan. I'm at third. I mean, I'm on the property of 13 Pondy Way. Mm -hmm. um, Come on up and sign in, please, okay. so we know who you are. Sure, I'd appreciate it. Thank no you. Problem. Um, well, he's putting that driveway, that's where it has a real steep slope. Yes. And if he puts the driveway there, then he's going to have all that road runoff from the water going into his property. Well, not if the driveway is if flush he, with the road well, surface. They, they, just, they have to redo the whole topo anyhow, so. It, it, so that would be, be raised up? And it, it, yeah, it's it, going to be a, basically a raised bib 
Right. It should be straight the same level as the road. It, that's what it, that's what it does show. It does show a slight retaining wall towards the back edge of it in a proposed grade that shows it basically flush with the existing. Ladies and gentlemen, why don't we wait till they come back to us with a a workable set of drawings with topos on and everything else, so we'll know exactly what's going on. At this point, all we're doing is conjecture and guessing. Right. Yes. Okay. So let's see what they come up with. Then we'll shoot holes in it. Okay. And if Ed's yeah, talking yeah, about there being a variance <laughs> we'll on our that may have been recorded no. with the deed, we, when we If we that, continue, so. you don't get notified again. You have to just keep it in your head. Okay. So. Uh, well, we'll give it a continued date tonight. So. Generally, okay. yeah. We'll give you a date to come back, for okay. sure. August, September. <laughs> no. Works for me. August, <laughs> September. Yeah. Yeah. October. Oh. <laughs> I know, I know. That took me a minute. Sorry. I saw that. It's been late. I mean, yeah. they, they won't make the January 16 meeting. No, let's do it. No, I mean, if, if we have to do a new plan, I mean, we're, we're going to have to actually go out there and survey it. I mean, I think my, app, the, my client was hoping he could utilize this. It was Good his impression that he if thought. It wasn't, yeah. If it wasn't, from my personal sure. standpoint, if it wasn't this 90% <laughs> in the wetlands, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'd probably be a little bit easier on it, but it's, yeah, it's the whole thing is there. and, and Al, you got to see how steep this is. I'm, I don't I'm, know how they're going to get to the well. Oh, I remember the other one we looked at up there. Like this. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we just so need some more information, that's all. Mm -hmm. What do you think, uh, the uh, first meeting in February or even the second meeting possibly? I would say probably the second. I mean, okay. we're not going to be able to get out there and do the survey till mid-January, so that would be you know, fair to give us till. Well, they have four feet of snow by then. Okay. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, the first one would be... <coughs> we don't really even have one scheduled for February yet. No, we just but figure the third. Uh, 13th and 20th. Third, yeah, the third one? Yeah. Or the, so the third one would be the 20th. Okay. Right? Would it be the 6th and the 20th? 30th, or the right? 13th six, and the 20th. 6th and the 20th. If we have one on the 6th, we might not have to have one on the 6th if yeah. we don't have one. Oh, one. February? Yeah. 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 The 20th? 20th. Let's, let's figure on February 20th. I'll make a motion to continue this. Um, 12 Pond View Way to the. February 20th meeting, at which time you'll provide more detailed drawings. Sure. I'll second that. Then move and second it to continue to 12, uh, for 12 Pond View Way to February 20th. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pass unanimous. And for the, um, Mr. Jimmy? Yes. For the public record, uh, the applicant on this filing, um, Don Correa, is my landlord. I just Reference feel like I need to to, to tell you that. But she, that's right, there's no bias involved because uh, the agent is not acting in any way on it. So, but put that on your calendar when you go home. Right, disclosure. <laughs> and, and just, I just want to make sure that. 7 p.m. What's the gentleman's name? Eddie. Interesting. Joe West. Steve. The guy from Joe West. Steve. 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 I, Steve, I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, that. I think you got the the um, the feeling from the board that, along with with seeing what you can do with the current footprint, to do as much investigating as you can to maybe change the location of that, look at this as a clean slate, what and expected, yeah. knowing what our bylaws are, sure. and trying to perhaps move the structure outside the 65 foot, which could in fact help raise it up, make it more like street level, yep. um, if arguing. if that's an option. Um, you know, maybe there's a way to move the septic tanks around a little bit within that little narrow, you know, flipping maybe the septic tank a little further to the west and maybe the house up closer to where the driveway pad is. You know, just something to look at since, since you're basically raising the structure that's there. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine even if there's a foundation there that it's any good. Right. Yeah. All right. I'm definitely going to want an answer to how you're going to get to that well. Okay. All right. Because All right. I... <laughs> I mean, I, I know that we've we've seen, and they, and they they can use hand augers to drill shallow wells. We've done them on ponds in Pembroke before in mm -hmm. situations like this. I think basically they have a just like if you were ice fishing, it's basically the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're not gonna, we're not going to let you take a twenty foot path down through there. You don't need a machine. It's basically two men holding a hand. Well, that's what the yeah. last guy said. We just we just <laughs> came back from there. Well, I mean, twenty I foot road. He's yeah. got a twenty Sounds foot like road. A good idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to work. <laughs> All right, Steve. Do your best, and yep. uh, sure. we'll deal with it. And then uh, also, Steve, can you just remind Joe that we we need uh, yeah all the all certificate of compliance for uh, I think it's one twenty six four hundred. Okay. The old file. Yeah. All right. I'll let him know. Thanks. 
Thank you. Okay. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yep. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Merry Thank you. Christmas. Okay, let's see. So that concludes our uh, for 12 Pond View Way tonight. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're not going to build anything. Have a good holiday. Merry Christmas. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy holiday, Paul. See you February 20th. <laughs> <laughs> February 20th. Hmm? February 20th. 7 o'clock? Yes. 7 o'clock. Yeah. Thank you. It probably actually won't occur it's until... Uh, It'll be 7.15. It'll Well, 7.15, possibly plus, too, because it's we have no so hearings. They always get precedence. <laughs> and since yours and is a continue, right. Right. it may be 7.30, but <laughs> it won't be that long. All right, let's get rid of this. Now, one. gentlemen, who uh, you you represent again? Uh, <laughs> Solar Project, 027 Wen Wenham Road. Okay. This is an uh, informal. informal. Informal discussion. discussion. Yeah, so I guess we sit up here. Yes. yes. So I'm uh, Alex. Oh, sure. Um, Alex from whom? Yeah, so I'm Alex Fox. I represent CVE North America. Uh, we're a solar development uh, company headquartered in uh, New York, but we've been uh, developing a number of projects across uh, Massachusetts. Um, our actual business is we're an independent power producer, so we ultimately own and operate the assets long term, 20, 30, 40 years. So we have a property that uh, we have under an option agreement here in town. Uh, it's located at, uh, I guess, 0 and 27 Wenham Road. Um, it's yeah. current currently uh, being operated as a cranberry bog. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of what our proposal is or what we're thinking of doing is putting in a dual use agriculture structure above the bog. So our idea at this point is that, you know, and in compliance with the DEP regulations regarding dual use ag, that we would install the system uh, effectively raised up above the bog right. mm -hmm. uh, and spaced in such a manner to still allow uh, sunlight through and to operate it and allow the operation of the bog uh, to continue but to also have a solar system there. Uh, uh, we don't have any we're still in sort of the incipient design stages uh, although it's very possible that we might incorporate storage along with it. Um, I don't know if that's part of the plan at this point. I th only because Savory and I and Jim yeah, we're it's looking at, a, at bylaws currently for this very purpose. Over okay. a certain size, all projects being built in Carver will have battery storage units in them. So Really? Yeah, pretty um, much. Well, I mean, we're, we have experience in battery storage, and we are yeah. looking to... In integrate that with our projects so uh, that would not be a smart, uh, uh, smart uh, yeah we program. would conceive of trying to get this into the smart program yeah. so and we're working on town bylaws now to bring before town meeting to deal with the incoming future of this Just uh, specifically for solar or for solar over the cranberry smart program bonds. for the okay. elevated dual use the dual use I see it as a double-edged sword other people see it as a great thing that can happen I see it as a can of worms that can be let out of the bag, so time will all tell. That report okay. guide won't come in for 20 years. So, well, then spacing sure. and what what's going to happen? Uh, you know, in 30 years, whatever something else changes, what are you going to do with them? Um, all that good stuff. So it's important that we. Mm -hmm. I think we have to look at the refuge well, park at the same time. Um, um, no, and there's two other dual use going in down in the back uh, with battery storage. It's not going to be a requirement. Okay. I, I don't know if the way Jim said that, I almost got the impression he was saying that it will have. Uh, it's going to be the option. Most likely, the dual use are going to be larger than <clears throat> and most likely will want to incorporate battery storage. And that's the point was we're trying to look into that whole right. thing from a town. Well, part, of the, uh, part of the DEP regulation is that it limits the size of the dual use to... Uh, I believe it's approximately two megawatts. So that's what we'd be looking at installing here. Uh, it might be approximately eight acres, which would effectively effectively <coughs> cover the uh, cover the existing bog there. So um, part of what we've done is we had hired uh, Goddard Consulting, who Dan Wells here represents, to take a look at the bog. 
and he prepared a report uh and I'll, I'll let him discuss his findings but I, I think essentially that uh, uh, they're primarily that it's a upland bog um, although I'm not an expert I'm, I'm sure you guys are way more familiar with uh, cranberry mm -hmm. bogs and, and what goes into it to us but I think part of the purpose we wanted to do by coming here tonight was to see how the uh, commission would view us doing a dual use uh, structure here and if that's even something that would be be permitted um, based on the preliminary work that Dan has done so that we don't you know spend a, a lot more time and, and resources in developing the project if it's not uh, really a, a suitable site so may I'll let Dan uh, discuss specifically what he what he did there and what he found. Sure, thanks, Alex. Again, Dan Wells from Goddard Consulting. So this this is an ortho photo of recent 2013 imagery. And these are the two parcels, 0 and 27 Wenham Road in red. And what I did was trace the outline of the bog in this yellow polygon, just so you can see. This is what it looks like, you know, more or less current conditions. The image is 2013. Um, this is the USGS map, the most current USGS, and so it shows kind of how that fits in with any uh -huh. mapped perennial streams and all that. So what I did next was I looked at historical imagery to try and get a sense of, you know, when was this bog built? And what I could find is... Um, so this figure three, this this is the first, so this is 1941, and this is the first time, th this is the earliest that we see the bog with its, this is the outline. So, and then, so I overlaid the current footprint, so it's changed slightly, but, so there were, and then I could also find, this is the earliest of the area, I could find, this is from 1916, and this shows actually that Back then, they had classified all this. This looks like forest, um, and clearly, so here's Wenham Pond, and there's Herring Brook. So as far back as 1916, this USGS map was calling this clearly not wetland, and they were classifying this as forest based on my reading of this. <coughs> I, I can show you the actual full-size map if that's helpful, but so just... I can you want me to bring this up closer if that's helpful. Uh, so clearly since I live on Wenham Pond, yeah. I <laughs> okay. Let's get a little closer and look at that. Was it was Herring Brook? They filled it in a long time ago. The Wenham Pond, Herring Brook. Mm -hmm. This is nineteen sixteen, so clearly this big weapon over here is identified and <coughs> Stripped out the trees and exactly. created a bog. Like so on, on that, so where's uh, where's Plymouth Street on that? Plymouth Street is under the W and Wenham. That's the right, right there. <coughs> this is center. That's Wenham there. That's the intersection. This is Silva. Right going up there. Yeah. Oh, so this is at this is when you come out of Silva yeah. Street. This is the bar. No, you're this is to, at? this is no, this is almost central. This, almost where Jamie's uh, right, right, right. Me, Wenham is. Right. Oh, almost, okay. almost. Okay. Going out behind it. Possibly, yeah. Is that down by the uh, Agway? Can I see that? No, not that far. The, it's it's yeah. right. You know where Bob Bentley's? The road goes down to Harju's Bogs, and Bentley's Bogs on the other side, of the on the north side of. Yeah, that's the. Harju's son owns right. a piece of that. Yeah. Old this section. is this is the old. Let me get my glasses. This is the old garage that had all the junk on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? It's right behind here. Oh, it's on right. the other side of the pond. It's on the Wait. other side of the yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, you're here. Yeah. So Sounds it's good. over here. But you're on a bluff, so you'll see him. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, on yeah. the... Uh, okay, I'm with I'll you I'll see now. him, that's for sure. You see these you know, vertical or you know, linear features in the ditches that were constructed. And I inspected... I'll show you photographs of some of the... On the cell. And this is clearly a man-made ditch here. It's perfectly straight and mm -hmm. ties into here. So, and, and this, so all of this was, in my opinion, man-made. Is this that Herring Brook to the right? Herring Brook is well, off that plant. Oh, on that side. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so coming out. Oh, I see. Right here. Oh, I see. Oh, right. oh, 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 oh
okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Of ponds. Yeah, I yeah. got you. Oh, okay. These so ponds. that series of ponds. These series of ponds, and then yeah. down through the rock. Yeah, right. One and other, down, down and down here. Yeah. Thing I'd like to show. This is the current U.S. Um, NRCS soils map, and the site is right in here. And all of these, but that will these soil polygons will be below what I can see. Soils, I don't think that will interfere at all. No, I know. I'm kidding. No. So the whole bog technically is an upland bog, most likely. So that, that was my pin, and, and I did, so let me show you some of the, I did some hand, you know, I did, dug some pits, that's just what it was looking like, yeah. and that verified, I was expecting if it was a wetland bog, I'd be seeing, you right. know, pea kind of things, I wasn't seeing that as, you know, far down yeah. as I could dig. That's what I got when I did it. It's like the one, going as far the one on Center Street yes. that, that mm -hmm. the uh, yes. Prime uh, Engineering did the yeah. study on. Right. They going as far down as down... Well, you can see the shovel. The shovel was yeah. the shovel handle. You're in two feet, so that you're yeah. down. I was going, in, you know, as far as I could. This is a stage shovel, you know. So. Yeah. So you're down two feet. Yeah. At least closer to three. Okay. Yeah. So and and it was, you know, just pure sand as you'd expect the first. Yeah, yeah, all sand. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't hitting any kind of key matter below that. How big is that bug? Uh, so we're uh, don't have the exact acreage. We figure it's got to be six to eight-ish. Yeah, oh. approximately eight. Oh. Big bog. And so here, here's a few pictures from, this is October 31st when I was out there. This this is the structure, it's a man-made outlet structure that ties in. Mm -hmm. It's right here, you can, mm -hmm. so it drains, you know, that's controlled by boards and that sends it out here. And this, this is from this corner over here, kind of facing mm -hmm. that part of the bog. This is there's a structure to this kind of man-made pump house, here, yeah. That little building there, and then this this is you can see it's perfectly linear. That's that's this feature here that drains it off site. So, so I guess my conclusion was that this this is an upland bog. So the <coughs> next question is if it's not you know if it's not a jurisdictional bog, do do we need to go through the whole dual use program and you know how does the commission have you dealt with that? Someone converting an upland bog into a into a solar farm or, or even some other use if it's not jurisdictional? You know, is hmm, there a right. preferred technique approach to this for them? In in general if it's if it definitely is an upland bog, all one has to do is cut off the water supply hmm. and uh, pay the five years back taxes and it reverts to uh, just uh, grand, uh, ground, you know. Yeah, ground. Yeah. So uh, it would then be available for use on. Uh, but they want to continue to make it a. You sh they want to keep it a cranberry bog. Do you or do you? You really want to just. Yeah, use that's it as our plan is to keep it. Uh, <coughs> our plan has been to keep it operating as a cranberry, cranberry bog. bog and install the uh, solar do over use it. on top of it. Okay, so you wouldn't you wouldn't drop it out of agriculture then. So. You gentlemen know more about this than I do. What about the battery storage? I, I keep there isn't going to be any. But uh, well, we might incorporate battery storage along with it. I mean, we would, you know, we just have to pour a, it's like a concrete box. pad nearby to place yeah. the batteries. But effectively, we would charge the batteries off of the. It's uh, just like a box. The solar store. array, and then we could disperse. Oh, yeah. Oh, there isn't. No, oh. it's a, it's a very pretty well slow, contained. But they don't. Uh, <laughs> They have they a don't leak. They have none of them don't, have don't, don't, don't yeah. Are they, they none of them like the Titanic wouldn't sink, right? Yes. Once they blow up, nobody cares if they leak or not, because there's nobody left. Uh, are the two properties owned by the same person? <laughs> yes. Okay. So it would be, would, so the activity would, would are there other bo I mean, active bogs around, would you be within the buffer zone to, to Herring? Broken stuff, would you? Or um, I mean, I don't know if you'd well, have to do. We've only right? done so some preliminary feet. environmental work. Yeah, so did you, you look at the surrounding yeah, wetlands, that's Dan? Right. That's that's over 100 feet, I think. 200 feet. Part. Part. Oh, okay. But if it's so you might be in the riverfront. This might be technically classified as a wetland. Yeah. So the access road coming into the site <coughs> might be that might trigger. So you might have to file. Yeah. Yeah. We probably. But that's not clear either yeah. how far where where the access yeah. would be. There's an existing kind of dirt road that you can mm -hmm. drive. Yeah. In. So. Because a lot of these are like, that we have have worked on, you know, the, if it, if it's an upland bog, sometimes there's other bogs 
wetland that, bogs around them, so they've had to file with us, you know, just because they're in the buffer zone. Yeah, that bog yeah I mean, little, certainly we would file, you know, know, obviously, a notice of intent if we're doing any work. Right. In yeah, there. If, right. if the USGS Buffers. shows that as a blue line, that becomes a river, and then our bylaws state a 200-foot yeah. yeah. setback. Yeah. That's, that's probably, that's close, though. So that, yeah. that it's certainly not in the inner right brain, but it's, it's, yeah. it's probably within a portion of the outer right brain. I guess the other question we had is, so we can comply with DEP's policy, but how would that, how would you see it under the bylaw, you know, if we were, if we're you know, doing all the, the steps to comply with this policy, there's nothing specific <laughs> in the bylaw that would prohibit it. No, it's really more the zoning bylaws that, mm -hmm. that you would have to, worry about. I don't know mm. if you've talk, spoken to anybody in planning or, mm. or zoning. It, it would probably be worth talking to Stephen Cole about it because as far as, you know, visual things that the planning board wants right. to see, uh, they have yeah. a bunch of other Right. The, the reason I asked about things. the properties is that uh, our current bylaws have a 200-foot setback from, diff from a property line. So you have your property line running right smack through that bog on the, on the southwest side. So you would have to have a 200-foot setback on either side of that red line mm -hmm. under our current zoning laws. Uh, they're being looked at for a possible um, Adjustments. revision to make it a little bit more commonsensical in a situation exactly like this right. where you've got a, you know two pieces of property owned by the same person who wants to put solar there. Why, why should there be this 200-foot <coughs> buffer on either side of it? But our current bylaws state that that buffer exists. Variances so. have been granted in a number of cases. Mm. Yeah, but that. okay. But that's just something to uh, to worry about. Our our jurisdiction would be within the 200 feet of the river. Um, yeah. I think that. Or any other I would bogs. like. I yeah, would fine. like to see core samples. Well, it has to be within 200 feet of the river, plus any bogs that are right, near that. Right. Which yeah. is another. In the access feet, road. obviously, Buffer, no, 100. 100 feet. Well, if, if, yeah, for right. filing, okay. yes. I don't see any, though, other bogs. But Stephen Cole will direct you building one. as to what the steps are you'll need to take. If it's going to be an upland bog, I think Jim is correct. We're going to need, the Conservation Commission is going to need to, to see evidence that it is, in mm -hmm. fact, an upland bog, yeah. which means there's going to need to be some core samples taken and then a report given which we just went through recently on another piece of mm -hmm. property. Right. Um, okay. What specifically, what core samples, you know, to a certain depth, you mean? Yeah, generally right. down to, uh, what's about 30 inches? Yeah, That's what we went down on like Center Street, I think she went down. 36, right? Yeah. Oh, it was 36. Okay, yeah. yeah. 36. So on it has on to be different places throughout the. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I have data, you know, I can provide DEP data sheets okay. from the samples I did, yeah. so. Yeah. All right. Was, were the samples, by a botanist or? Uh, well, I'm a wetland scientist. Yeah. So. Yep. That works. That's who did the one in Center Street. That works, she was, okay. Yep. All right. You know how those scientists are. Just making sure. <laughs> and. <Me too. laughs> is there, uh, I wasn't clear, is there an existing solar bylaw in town? Or there is one, one that's yes. There is. It's okay. a little cumbersome Being and it was written amended. without, uh, it was written Working by people who weren't that familiar with things. Speaking they were very guy. fearful. There were okay. panic buttons being pressed well, we, when we, this first the came The town overprotected play. itself up front to make sure nothing. Now we're, it, we're getting a little more knowledge. we got good people working on it. And rightly so. Yeah, it was new technology well, at the time. So the yeah, sure. I haven't that both saying, looked at it. So? There, there is a bog <laughs> that was um, approved uh, before this bylaw was even considered, and that put heat yeah. under the, the bylaw it set a bad uh, building commission. <laughs> and uh, they started worrying very badly about it. So they were building, concerned so. about setbacks mm -hmm. off the property line sure, for the yeah. abutters, yeah. Yeah. and the 200-foot number just came yeah. in with nobody giving any real consideration to what if there's two bogs side by side, or what if there's two lots that share one mm -hmm. bog. Right. From the town standpoint, Savory's 100% right. That's two separate lots. Okay. So that the setback for solar would have to be 200 feet on each lot line. Without which a means barriers. there's a 400-foot gap between your solar panel. Without yeah, a right. And then how about the one with they had on, uh, oh, the one that Golden. they got in the argument about the, from residences? Remember, there weren't yeah. any residences, but they still had the... Yeah, they wanted to have yeah, a 200-foot setback also from residences. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, we, we pretty much have worked mm. through that, too. So I would definitely, I'd recommend ca calling Stephen Cole 
Okay. And set up something informal with him, because then he can, you know, tell you all the planning board <coughs> issues, and that will help you probably, you know. You can say that you talk to us informally, and as far as the blog goes, it's, prob it's probably going to be okay with us, but, okay. you know, you need to know about getting your access road in any... Right. Of the setbacks, you know, property lines. And then a further FYI is is the bylaw changes that are we're working on now through a bylaw review committee is going to wind up at town meeting. And if May. it is approved in April, April. at the town May? meeting, April. those bylaws will go into effect. Plenty. Right, and they've already been, I guess, noticed so that they would any new application would have to comply with them. Uh, no, we're so not yet. Oh, not yet. I mean, we're in the nascent stages of just developing. Yeah. There's a task force now to develop what the new bylaws are. Currently, anything that comes before will go under the bylaws as they exist. Okay. Or a variance. Or a variance, mm -hmm. right. Which most likely, if the bylaw were changed and you were in under the old bylaws but had not started construction yet, it would behoove you to just make it a new application in the current bylaws and I don't think a variance would be that difficult no. to obtain at that point anyway. Right. It should be easier. Because that actually. point becomes moot. Okay. Now, just I, to let you know that there are changes coming to for, that's going to address this very thing. Great. And one of the yeah, items is, is to address <laughs> this. <laughs> because everybody on the board and everybody that I think I've talked to have all agreed that you know, 400 feet between the lot lines, while well, it's a great idea when it's the cranberry bog or a, or a commercial property to a residence, makes no sense at all when it's, two, we would, the, the, same the scenario was that's two bog owners, contiguous. and that was the lot line, so they each would have to be back, and that didn't make any sense. Even, well, that would be even an exception when this, to the rule. There were three proposed solar uh, arrays, um, all owned by the same person, same company, and, uh, but the planning board originally wanted a 200-foot setback between each one of them. And uh, it took uh, some court action to stop that. Okay. <laughs> the zoning board had to mm -hmm. fight very hard for it, but they did. So, The, uh, the topography to the north of the bog, is that, uh, is that a, sort of like a, a bluff or a hill <clears throat> so that the bog itself is sort of in a, in a lower position? Yeah, it all kind of Looks like the okay. topo goes down. Yeah, because right? because uh, one of the other things is view blocking from residences that's in the bylaws. Yeah, there is screening. There's screening. Um, no, yeah, I mean we're. Nothing. Yeah, but you're. I think you're far outside that. Perfectly willing to put in. I mean screening. I mean when I, I visited it some time ago. I don't recollect it. It seemed to me at the time that it was not particularly mm. visible. But I. Am, yeah. I mean, but you're if you're somebody's up on a hill. Uh, well, you're not talking well, about a 16 foot high panel either. Well, you are. Uh, they're going to be a little bit higher in order to you know, keep with the uh, smart yeah, requirements 15. of the. Um, yeah, the uh, there's some specific height requirements for the dual use agriculture right. where you have to be a, a minimum of eight feet above, I think, for 15. the toe of the panel. Um, yeah, the back may be even higher. Uh, but it's still going to fall under screening requirements within. Yeah, I mean, we'll certainly do a, you know, a, a visual study and. Uh, if I mean, certainly we'll comport with anything that's required uh, regarding screening, but we're, uh, you know, we've, we've worked closely with other towns to put in uh, screening and to, uh, and with neighbor butters as well in order to satisfy what they, uh, you know. Right, but it looks I understand not everybody thinks that it looks that great. So. Yeah, well, it looks as though you've got natural screening there already with the forest there. I think so. It does. We'll see how high those, well, we have to do a topo, but you can do a topo on it anyhow, right? Mm. They would have to, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately, we'll be doing a topographic survey, a and we can also what's going on. Uh, we can also do a visual impact study with mm -hmm. renders and other right. mm -hmm. other things as we get yeah. further along in the, in the process. Yeah. And yeah. Just wanted to, you know. Yeah. I think uh, we gave you enough homework for one day. Yeah. Um, would would we do a, like an RDA for you to determine that it's an upland bog, or could you do it more? We in could progress? do that. We have done that before. We did that at you know Eaterville for those yeah. bogs. Right. Yeah. Center Street, we didn't, we did it as part of the. But doing it right? Center Street, no. No, we didn't. Uh, uh, no, scientists, you want to go on the hook and tell us it's an upland bog and stamp mm. your stamp on it and sign your name? Yeah, to and it. if we have a report from you, and okay. everything, you no, we're not going to. Go gonna, the whole yeah. We're not going to run out and get a second opinion. Right, right. okay. It's going to hold you to it, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sure. fair enough.
Okay. All right. All right. We'll definitely talk to Stephen though. But it's definitely yeah, doable. I'll give him a what you're trying to do is yeah. definitely a doable project in this town. Yep. Mm -hmm. The only reason we sound so we don't know yet is because we don't know yet. We don't the, the, <laughs> because we don't know yet. We haven't pinned down the new bylaws and so forth. And these are we know this is coming, so we're trying to get a handle on where it'll be a fair deal to everybody. We don't want we want to protect the residents. We don't want to slam the door on the developer, and yeah. sometimes that's a balance and act that, you know, you can sometimes dance on the head of a pin before you can. Sure. Yeah, get I that mean, one right. we have uh, we have seven you projects. From New York, you know exactly what I'm talking. Yeah, about. we have seven projects in Massachusetts at this stage. One of them in Westport, where, uh, you know, we've gone through the process, so we've gone through a lot of working with the oh, yeah. town and directly with the butters to try to uh, make sure everybody's. Uh, can address right. everybody's Good. concerns, yeah. so I certainly want to do that here. Thank yep. you. Thank you for your Here's time. Hold the Stephen Cole. He'll yeah. put yep. you on the correct yep. path and where you need to be. And yep. Usually he sends you back to us before we send you to the planning <laughs> so that if I, you I blow you out of the water, yeah. you don't He'll want to talk spend to me the money on the planning. Right. Where, are you great. where are you located in New York? Uh, we're in Manhattan in oh. Chelsea. Chelsea. Okay. I'm, in I'm Chelsea. a native New Yorker. Oh, okay. Born and raised in Tarrytown, lived in the city for. Yeah, we don't have any high rises around here. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we still like them. Yeah. Still I, live, I live in rural Connecticut. Right? Still welcome rural on Connecticut. the board. Yeah, I, I grew up in Tarrytown, but I lived in the village for a long time. Where in Chelsea yeah. is your office? I'm sorry. Where in Chelsea is your office? Southern New Yorker. Uh, it's on West 23rd Street. I used to live on West 22nd. My dentist. Oh really? Wow. I worked on 21st. I worked where Trader Joe's is now. Where'd oh, you really? used to live down in New York? That's, uh, that's where I go when I need uh, yeah. when I'm at the office. That used to be Barnes and Noble. I worked on the yes, third floor. <laughs> Where'd you used to live in New York City, Tim? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, all escape. They got trees. I don't live there. They, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you got to have real trees, none of that fake stuff. Two New Yorkers on the board. Who would have guessed it? Yeah. You're not too right. Yeah. No, Christ. <laughs> I went to school in New York. You don't have Some a of place to go for on it. Yeah. Only on. <laughs> Only oh, Anta, nice really? Place. That's nice Hatwick. up there. Hatwick. Yeah, Hatwick College. All right. Have a nice trip back. Right, thank, thank you. Thanks. Take care. I know a great pizza place. In All right. Do the minutes. Come on, let's go. All right, minutes. I'll quick. I'm oh, wait a minute. Real quick before I forget. Limbia's path. I talked what? to Miguel <clears throat> at Limbia's. Yes. Yeah. He talked to the solar people, and he, and he said, is it all right if those trees that we said he could cut, if he cuts those, but the other ones, could he just cut the very top branches. No, and topping them wrong. Topping them won't work. It'll kill the tree. Mm. Those trees are this big around. You top it, forget it. No, I think yeah. he just said the top branches so that, because you talked to the solar guy, no. he said that's all he has to do. Oh, no. I don't even want him to do anything till he marks everything and, and has the whole end. Yeah. Okay. I want the 65 foot. I, again, and it's the word that Alan and I and all of us hate, precedence. I know, I know. If if we start allowing people topping trees, oh my God! I was thinking about it before. Solar solar benefits one person. That's right. In a case like that, protecting the wetlands benefits everyone. That's right. So that takes precedence. Coming from a tree. Oh, I I agree. Oh, I definitely. I grew up with trees. I grew up in the No, I think it's if you start doing that, everybody everybody who has solar panels on top of the house, they're all going to cut want to cut the trees all around. Yeah, so. You know, I think that the one tree that we'd noticed that was... Uh, the a, dead one. A, yeah. No, the dead one can go, but the one that was very tall oh, the, and a threat high. to the house. Yeah. yeah, it did lean toward the house. Take right. it out. And um, and the other ones that were further west... Forget it. Uh, it looked to me as though those were... Um, those would block the sun as it was setting. So the, it's not in the center of the day, the heat of the day in the, in the winter. Yeah. When it, I don't, I don't know how much power generation mm. would be done if those trees were taken well, down. If you it, but there was a the question. Of, the those were, were those were one of the ones that looked like they might be outside everything. Remember, we if, won't know till it's if marked. If they right? are, okay. then he can do what yeah. he like. Right. So it's got to be marked. Yeah. Okay. We do I think we've got to figure out a way to have solar arrays that can be 20 feet above the roof line, so That's that fine. they can uh, yeah. catch the sun without the problem from the trees. Right. Have them have them telescope up in the winter and back down in the summer. Just crank it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's read those minutes. I read mine. Yeah, right. I um. I got here early. Draft appointment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
somebody's getting ready. <laughs> Not that she doesn't, she doesn't want to hang around. All right. Um, I'm good. Sit by the woods. I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of written. November 14th. I'll second. Yeah, but I'll on. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes as written for November 14th. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pass unanimous. Motion to adjourn. I'll aye, se second. Okay. Been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pass unanimous. We're so, out of here. so the, at the on the. Good night. Thank you.